Hello everyone, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we use workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. And these workshops and exercises are published to our, our website, aws-dozo.com. Today, we are going to talk about Amazon Messi. It's quite a new service, and this service is used to uh, discover and protect your sensitive data inside Amazon S3 bucket. So let's go and talk about this service a bit. So as I mentioned earlier, if you have your data stored into S3 and you want to uh, discover and protect any type of sensitive data stored into that, then you can use Amazon Messi service. Amazon Messi can identify sensitive information such as your uh, PII, like your personal identifiable information, um, sometimes your uh, financial information, like uh, something like bank accounts or, or credit card numbers, um, something which looks like credential information, uh, any kind of intellectual property like code. Uh, if, if those type of information are into your S3 bucket, it can discover that. And based on the configuration of the bucket, it can also tell you what kind of threat is on uh, that sensitive information. So not only uh, so when I say configuration, it could it, it could mean like whether the bucket is public or not, whether it's encrypted or not, uh, uh, what kind of access is provided on that bucket. So th think of a scenario that you have stored some kind of sensitive in information to S3 bucket, uh, and if it is, for instance, a private bucket, um, then it is encrypted bucket, and uh, it has very restricted access, then uh, Messi will say, okay, fine, I see sensitive information, but uh, I, I, I raise it as a, as a low risk um, or medium risk because uh, the information is quite protected. But suppose the bucket is not encrypted, it is public, and it see that a lot of people are accessing the bucket, then uh, that is a high risk item uh, for you. So really, Messi can not only identify that you have you are storing some kind of sensitive information to your bucket, but it can also give uh, it can also raise uh, incidents of finding uh, categorizing categorizing at medium high low uh, in terms of the risk it carry. So what you can do in Messi that you can go and create actually uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, sensitive data discovery jobs. Uh, these are automated scheduled jobs you can create on certain setup bucket. Uh, you are storing your data, keeping your data, keeping your files, uh, and then these jobs will go and identify uh, the sensitive data. Now you might uh, say, how does uh, Messi identify the sensitive uh, sensitive data? And for that, actually, uh, it has fully managed sensitive data types. So it has its own machine learning and algorithms to find uh, what is a sensitive data. And it's try to uh, categorize sensitive data as a personal information or information like credit cards or intellectual property information uh, and our credential information keys. So it has really a uh, uh, built-in um, data types, which is fully managed by AWS uh, to identify your sensitive, uh, sensitive details into your bucket. But at the same time, suppose you are trying to, uh, you want to define certain uh, custom sensitive data type, which is very particular to your organization need, and not there, they're really into the fully managed sensitive data types, then you can create your own types of finding as well. And in fact, we are going to cover that also in the in the exercise today. Uh, Messi supports multi-account. That means under uh, you can you can do multi-account S3 scanning under. Uh, at, at one place, and the findings of the Messi are published to uh, services like Event Bridge uh, or, or, or Service Hub or Security Hub. Uh, and due to this publishing to Security Hub and Event Bridge, you can also uh, take actions on the findings. So, really, the flow is very simple your data is stored into S3 bucket, and um, Amazon Messi is trying to use either out-of-box uh, sensitive data types or custom-defined sensitive data types to identify sensitive data and the kind of risk it carries. It will simply discover that sensitive data and the risk associated with that, and then it will publish that information to 
services like event bridge or um, or a security hub so that you can take action on that and that action could be a manual action or could also be an automated action so that's all what messi does pretty uh, smart and powerful service so what we are going to build today is is pretty straightforward. We are going to have uh, one S3 bucket uh, in which we'll put two data. Uh, one is a CSV file with some personal identifiable information. And then we have another PDF with some text information. And this one I'm going to use uh, primarily to uh, do a custom data type. Uh, then uh, in Amazon Messi, what we go, we, we define one custom identifier, which is um, which will be used to identify a custom sensitive data type. Uh, and then we will go and create a job, which will simply do the uh, sensitive data discovery on, on this, uh, th these files into the S3 bucket, and then we'll publish the finding. Okay, uh, well, uh, we're not looking at the really publishing to the event bridge or um, uh, or uh, or uh, uh, or uh, security hub at this point of time, but it will, I'll show you the finding it uh, it gets, and, and then integration to the security hub and uh, event bridge event bridge is pretty straightforward after that. So uh, the exercise uh, is published on aws dojocom uh, the URL of the exercise has been provided in the description box below as well. Uh, so let's go and see what it takes to complete the exercise. So here is the exercise. Uh, it's on aws-dojo.com. Um, so what we are going to do is uh, the first step is to uh, um, have um, uh, an AWS account. Uh, and if you don't have AWS account, then uh, you can use this link to create a free trial account. Then we create one S3 bucket, and uh, this S3 bucket is used to store the two files which Messi is going to uh, scan to uh, do the uh, to do the uh, sensitive data discovery. So we create a bucket called Dojo Messi Exercise, yeah, uh, or choose the bucket name you want. Uh, once it is done, then first you go and enable the Messi. So Messi by default is disabled for your account. Uh, so what you can do that you can go to um, Amazon Messi and say, I want to enable Messi. And once you have enabled Messi, what it will do that it will look into your, uh, in, it will look into your buckets uh, and it will uh, do certain level of analysis. Uh, and you can see it's initial analysis. So for saying, okay, you have got one bucket and none, one, none of them are public. Um, um, yeah, none of them are encrypted. So it, it gives you uh, none of them are shared. So it gives you certain level of uh, no, high level kind of uh, um, overview about uh, your uh, accessibility, your shareability, and also the type of encryption you have on your bucket. That information it provides. But we want to go beyond it, right? So what we do then, then we go and upload two files to S3 bucket, which we want to analyze through uh, Messi. Uh, one file is this file, which is uh, a, a dummy file where we are simply uh, putting um, dummy customer name and uh, phone numbers, which are which look like real, but actually they are dummy names. So th this is an example where uh, you have your personal identifiable information. Uh, and then uh, the second file is uh, actually a PDF file, which is just a sample file. Uh, in this file, what we are going to do is that we are we will try to uh, look for a, a word called login. And if a text has a word called login, then I'm going to cache that as a, as a sensitive data. So this will be an example of a customer data type, customer, uh, sorry, custom sensitive data type. So let's move further. So these two files we upload to S3 bucket. Okay, so my data is ready. Now we go and create a custom detection rule, which will simply go and identify the custom data type. So simply go to the uh, Messi, go to the customer data identifier, create the identifier, and then you give it give it a nice name. This identifier, uh, let's call it say um, Dojo uh, login rule. And then we are saying, and there's a field called regular expression where you provide the regular expression to define uh, the ident identification of your uh, custom data type. And I'm saying that, hey, look for the word login. Yeah? Keep it simple in this case. But really, it's a regular expression. So you can make it as complex as you want. And then you can also uh, add some uh, uh, include words and, and, and exclude words. So you can say, OK, uh, look for this kind of regular expression. But you might want to see this 
keywords in combination with the regular expression and these kind of words you want to uh, you want to exclude so you, so you really you can really go and define very complex type of custom data type custom uh, no, sensitive data type identification in this case we are keeping it simple that hey if you see a login word you know what I'll just uh, give a red flag so after that uh, the 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 rule is created so now my custom rule is created with to identify the custom data um, data type you can also test the rule so uh, what you do for you go to the evaluate form and then simply put some sample data over here and say submit and it will tell you that hey ah i see one match because it has a word called uh, login so really uh, you can take some of your sample data uh, from your uh, from your file from your uh, data uh, objects and then you can put that sample data over, over here to test whether the kind of rule you created is working or not and it is able to identify the type of data you want to identify or not so you can really test it so now my custom rule is ready and uh, now we'll create a massive job which will simply do the uh, discovery of the sensitive data so you go to Messi again, click on the jobs, and then say, I want to create a job. And in this case, it will ask you which buckets you want to analyze. And in this case, we have just one bucket. Uh, but yeah, of course, you can have more than one bucket. Uh, and then you say, OK, um, uh, how do you want to run this? I mean, do you want to run it as a scheduled job? And generally, in production environment, you want to run it as a scheduled job because you want to simply configure it and forget about it and let Messi keep discovering my sensitive data and notify me about it, right? Uh, but in this case, we are going to say one-time job because I want to run it manually for this exercise. Uh, and after that, say, okay, fine. Now I have scheduled my job, uh, uh, which is manual at this point of time. They can can do you want to do any custom data identifier? And yes, we have created one customer data and custom data identifier. So we are going to select that, and that's it. And then you give this job a nice name, and you create the job, you submit the job. The moment you submit the job, uh, since it is a one-time uh, job execution, it will start running. Uh, now this execution can take some time, like roughly like when I did when I when I was writing this exercise, it took roughly uh, 12 minutes to finish the job. But once it finishes the job, uh, you can see the status as complete. And then you can uh, see on the right hand side your results. And in the results, you can click on this show finding. Uh, and you can see certain details, by the way, here as well. But if you want to see the details finding, then click on the show finding. And when you go click on the show finding, actually, it will show you that, hey, I have got two set of uh, two set of uh, findings. Yeah. And, and this is the severity uh, of the finding. So one is high where I see some personal identifiable information and it is high probably because my bucket is not encrypted, though it is a private bucket, uh, that's why it is high. And then I see also some medium uh, for my custom uh, custom uh, identifiable data, okay? Uh, and this is the other files or the objects where my uh, data, uh, sensitive data has been identified. So you can click on these uh, findings to see the details. So for instance, we click on the customer, custom identified findings, then you can go and see the, uh, finding details on the right hand side you can click on this finding id it will really show you the full json file of your finding so if you click on that you can see the json file like this this is a part of the json file but it has a lot more detail and you can see here that it has identified uh, uh, some uh, some uh, matches uh, based on my custom identification i have uh, i have uh, uh, created here right Similarly, if you go and click on your uh, on your personal finding, you can see that hey, I can see some personal identifiable information like last name, uh, address, uh, identification number. So uh, really, it can it can find that yeah, my da my data has some PII information over there, so it can it can find the findings. Now, what happens is that these findings are actually published automatically to either Event Bridge or Secret uh, or Security Hub. And that publishing publishing frequency has been defined into the setting section. You can go and change this publishing frequency if you want to. And by default, it's 15 minutes. But if you want to change other than 15 minutes, you can very well do that. You can also handle uh, such kind of analysis across or discovery across multiple accounts. Uh, you have to over add those accounts over here, and then you can analyze the buckets uh, in in those accounts as well. So that was uh, that was all uh, for uh, this exercise. Um, and uh, uh, in the end, I will strongly recommend that you go and clean up your resources, like disable your messy and delete the bucket so that you don't incur any cost uh, after the exercise. So that was all about uh, the uh, exercise today. 
Um, there are many other similar exercises and workshop on our site, aws-dojo.com. Uh, we strongly recommend that you go and, and uh, use those exercises and workshop to learn about AWS services. Hope you like the video. And if you like, please click on the like button. Please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any feedback or comments, if you want to ask for some new kind of contact, either you can put that comment into our YouTube channel, or you can also click on this contact us button and provide feedback over here. Thanks for your time. Hope you liked the video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.